gates, arrays, ROMs, PLAs, PL. We're going to be looking at these devices. Again, the multiplexer, the drawback to multiplexer is you can only have one output for a multiplex. So if you need more than one output, if you have three functions like F, G, and H, you need three multiplexers. You can do it with decoder, but you'll need OR gates. So for example, let's say you have this circuit and you want to, or these expressions, F equals A bar, B bar, plus A, B, C. G equals A bar, B bar, C bar, plus a, B, plus B, C, and H, which is equal to what? A bar, B bar, plus C. And I want to build, these were simplified. Somebody did the K-map for me, simplified each one. I want to build a circuit. I want to build, I don't know, a board that has these three functions on it. You have actually three inputs, A, B, and C, and you have three outputs. So the way we build that is so I should put them on a graph paper, so I'll just rewrite them because I, I don't have to use two sheets of paper. I don't have to flip back and forth. The first thing you look for, do I have any matching gates? You're trying to get matching gates. So I see A bar, B bar are matching here, so I can use the same one for both of them. I don't have to use two AND gate, two separate ones. So I look for that, I say, yep, I got a matching one. Let's see how I'm gonna graph that. So I'm gonna have my three inputs. This is A, this is B, and this is C. And I'll try to be nice and neat. And since I'm going to need the knot here, might as well get the knot immediately. And by the way, if you decided to design things, that's really what you do. You don't go and build them yourself. You design them on a sheet of paper, and you pass them to the technician, and they build it for you. This is the knot gate. So you want to try to be nice and neat so anyone can follow your design. They can't read your mind. And this is the knot for B. So I need three knot gates. And this is the knot for C. I gotta buy me one of those gadgets that you can draw an AND gate quickly with it. So I'm looking for matching gates. Do you see any matching gates beside this one? Which one? Can we do the A, B, C, and A bar, B bar, C bar? A, B, C. Not and this one? Yeah. No. That's different. It's not equal to the same thing. No. Yeah. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six gates. Six and gates. So here's what I'm going to do with the design of that. Let me do, this is one, two, three, four. The C, I really don't need an AND gate to it, right? But I'll put an AND gate, one, two, three, four, five, six. And each one of these is going to have an output here. I have a, a lesson for this just to show. I'm going through showing you. 
There's a reason why I'm drawing them all. The first one has A bar and B bar going to it. And what you want to do, attach A bar and B bar to it. A bar and B bar. And notice I'm going to put a dot on where I'm connecting it. So the person looking at it knows I'm connecting A bar and B bar to it. And here is one for my output. This is F, this is G, and this is H. What's attached to that gate? F is attached to it, what else is attached to it? That's going to F. And it's going to where? To H. The second one, A, B, and C. A, B, and C. And that's going to where? To F. Does it go anywhere else? No. The next one, A bar, B bar, and C bar. A bar, B bar, and C bar. And that's going to G. Next one, A and B. Where is that going? G, B and C. And that's going to G. And the last one was attached to it, just see. Do I need an AND gate? Not really. I could have just attached directly to C. The bottom here, when I do it like this, this is really nothing more than an OR gate. We just because you can't just attach them to a wire. So you got these wires coming down. You should label the top. You want the top label? Okay. F, G, and H. So really, if you wanted to graph it the way we normally graph it, we do this. We draw a line going to this. This is two of them going to it, right? Two AND gates. Like this. Two of them going to it. This one has how many lines going to it? I already cheated here. Three lines, right? And this one has how many lines going to it? I already gave you the solution to this, actually. What I'm trying to do, I already gave you a hint. So people start saying, why do we have to draw all these lines? Why can't we just take these and put one line and just circle the dot that we need? To draw all these lines, it looks like, uh, it's, it's OK, I mean, but it's like a lot of work to make the lines straight. So nobody does them this way anymore. So the way we do them right now, the same function, now we graph that. I already gave you the hint. You saw it till I started erasing it.
So we're going to take this design, instead of drawing it this way, draw every single wire that's attached to it, we're going to short that, make it a little bit easier on all of us. And the technician will know what that means. When they see it, they know exactly what you meant. So again, this is A, B, and C. Put a knot gate for each one. I get A, B, and C. And again, I still have six gates, six AND gates. Let me put the, this next to it so you get to see the advantage of that. Instead of drawing two lines going to this, so when you see that now, you're only going to see one line. And what's attached to the first one? A bar and what? B bar. So instead of attaching all three lines, just do one line. A bar and B bar. So this is A bar, B bar. I'll finish it. Next one. What's going to it? A, B, C or A, yep, A, B, C. One line. Oh. A, B, and C. That's equivalent to having the three lines. On paper, that's what we're implying is this design. Three lines go into it. Let me just stretch this a little bit. So this is what? A, B, C. The next one, A bar, B bar, C bar. We draw one line. A bar, B bar, C bar. The next one, one line, A and B. The next one, I forgot to write this one, A bar, B bar. A bar, B bar. And the last one is what? C? And we design them this way. Again, you know how at the bottom we have the old gates with three lines, two lines going to each one? We're going to use the same logic. We're going to draw one line going through, and that's one old gate. Another one, that's another old gate. And the last one, another old gate. You only need one, F, G, and H. So Ricardo can see it, F, G, and H. <coughs> instead of, uh, again, instead of drawing three lines to this, two lines to this, two lines to this, we draw one line, what's attached to F? This one and this one. What is attached to H? This one and C. 
What's attached to G? This one, this one. Did I leave one out? Yeah, One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I did A bar, B bar already, right? I don't need that. Should be BC, right? I don't need this twice. I already have it up there. So I guess I, I missed it on the other one too. We did? I just wrote it on the wrong one. BC here? Yep. So when you attach B and C to it, where is B? Right here, and where is C? Right here. So whoever looking at this, now he knows or she knows, this is the same as this. I don't have to attach every line. So you're gonna see us do this actually in PLA and PL and ROM. Much, much easier. A lot of times I don't even put an OR gate here, I just put a line instead of the OR gate. So notice here what the book is saying. Rather than showing all the wires, only a single input line is usually shown for each gate, with X or a dot shown at the intersection where the connection is made. They use X's, here's asterisks, I use dots, but you put a dot or asterisk to show where the connection is. And it makes it much cleaner. Instead of drawing all these lines and connecting the correct one, going this, this, and that, this is ridiculous to connect all these lines. Nope, I'm only going to show you what's attached to that. So we're going to start that by looking at ROM, read only memory. Now, if Here's a ROM. Let's say I want to design these functions. Function W, which has the inputs A, B, C, D. And this is the summation of 3, 7, 8, 9, 11, and 15. Function X, A, B, C, and D, my inputs, are 3, 4, 5, 7, 10, 14, and 15. And function Y, it's A, B, C, D. And this is going to be 1, 5, 7, 11, and 15. So how do we use ROMs for that, a ROM? A ROM stands for what? Read only memory. So you can only read from it. So when you get a ROM, it comes programmed already from the factory. And you just grab it and start using it. There's a few variation of the ROM. It's called EPROM. There's PROM. What's PROM? Programmable read-only memory. Programmable, that means you can get it. If you have a device that will program them, it's a blank one, you can program it. 
But once you program it once, it's gone. Can't use it again, you can't change it. And there's EEPROM, erasable, programmable, read-only memory. Just like CDs, remember CDs, you used to get the CD, it's already the stuff on it, you couldn't change it. Then we came up with what? CDs that you can write on yourself. So you can get the CD, you can put your favorite song on it, once you put the stuff, you can't change it. Then they came up with the newer ones, erasable CDs, where you can, after a couple of months, the song is boring, now you don't like it anymore, you can go back, erase the CD, and reprogram it. Well, the same thing with the ROM. You can program the ROM. That's a PROM. If it's a PROM, you can only program it once. If it's EPROM, you can erase it and program it as many times as you want to. Some of them double EPROM, electric, electronically erasable. Electrically erasable, we use charges to erase it. Programmable read-only memory. See, CDs, when you take a CD and actually uh, you burn it, what you do, you put a hole, it's called a pit. You put a hole in it when you burn that CD. So when you actually, when the CD is smooth there, when you buy it new, there's no holes in it, it's like, like a mirror. When you shine a light at it, what's gonna happen to that light? It bounces back. So there's a receiver right there, they shine a light, and the light will bounce back. Well, there's in physics, some of you took physics. If this is the CD standing up, we have a transmitter that will shine a light, and that light is gonna deflect here, to a receiver. This angle is called Snell's Law. Remember Snell's Law? Angle of yep. The incident angle equals the angle of reflection. So when you shine that light, if there's no hole, it's going to bounce back. Well, when there's a hole in it, when you shine that light, it's not going to bounce where you think it's going to bounce. So that receiver might just missed it. And that's how they know if it's one versus zero. Once you put these holes in them, you can actually erase them, I mean, fill them again. You're not gonna get a putty and just fill them and smooth it and wax it out, it's ready to go now. So it's only programmable once. Now we have them, different design, we can erase them and use them again, you know. So when you get a, if you want actually to design um, or get a chip that has this on it, you send this to the factory and what the factory does now we're using physics here. So I don't need a big one. Notice this is four inputs. Four inputs has how many combinations? 16. So this will be 16 rows. So the chip comes like this, and it has 16 rows and four. Let's say this is, this is called 16 by 4 ROM. If it's 16 by 4, that means it has four outputs here. And it's programmed like this. The inside of it, if I can make it nice and neat. One, I better write small. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I better write small, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That counts 0, 1, 2, 3, I think it's 16 now. And you have what we call them four inputs. The inputs are, I'll use A as the most significant, B, C, and D. Most significant bit, least significant bit, LSB. So I'm using A as my most significant. I have four outputs. So when, when this A, B, and C, A, B, C, D, let's say we have one, zero, zero, one on it. What does that mean? What that means to the ROM, whatever in location nine, the binary code is nine here, right? So location really 10, that's zero, one, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 9 here. Whatever in that row here, make sure it appears right here. It's designed that way. So this value will show up here or down here. depends how they connect them. This value on the next one. This value on the next one. This value on this. So what your job is, if you want, for example, let's say I want this to be my W and this to be my X and this to be my Y. This is W, X, and Y. And I don't care about the last one. What do you put there? So I can make the last one all zeros. I'm not attaching it anywhere. I don't care. W is going to have a value of one where? A three. So, uh, got to put them higher. W, X, and Y. So W is going to have a value of one where? A three. That's zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is one. Eight is one. 9 is 1, 10 is 0, 11 is 1, 12 is 0, 13 is 0, 14 is 0, 15 is 1. X. X is going to have a value of 0, 0, 0, 1, 4 is 1, 5 is 1, 6 is 0, 7 is 1, 8 is 0, 9 is 0, 10 is 1, 11 is 0, 12 is 0, 13 is 0, 14 and 15 ones. And y is going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 1, 6 is 0, 7 is 1, 8 is 0, 9 is 0, 10 is 0, 11 is 1, 12 is 0, 13 is 0, 14 is 0, 15 is 1. I want that chip to be programmed like this. I give them the schematic like this. When I get that chip back, I'm going to take it. I'm going to attach W to this, X to this, Y to this. And once I attach them, once you put, notice if I put, for example, What's this address here? Zero, 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 one, two. If I put three here, zero, zero, one, one. This value, W will be one, X will be one, and Y will be what? Zero. If we put a 15, one, 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 15. That's this value. What is W is going to be? One, X is going to be one, and Y is going to be one. So the nice thing about this, they come out in bigger chips, so you can have 60, remember when we had 64 inputs, like a six variable K map, that was not easy to simplify? I don't have to simplify. And I can have eight, 10, 12 outputs. They come, four, eight, use two sets of eight if you need that. If you're not using all of them, oh well, so what? Well, instead of drawing this, we figure that's too much to draw for them to read it one, zero, zero, one. That gets confusing. So when I ship it to the factory, I'm not going to make this terrible, but, but I want them to make this chip for me that way. But to make it easy on them, instead of writing the function like this, I'm going to write them using the same setup that I did here with little modifications. So this is how I'm going to ship it to them. And I'm telling them to do the same thing I'm doing here, actually. Here we go. W. I have three inputs. W. X. I'm sorry. I'm using A, B, C, D, right, for inputs. My output is W. A. B. C. And D. I have four outputs. That means I'm going to need the knot for each one. This is the knot, so I'm already putting the knot, the line for it. This is A, B, the knot of B. This is C, the knot of C. This is D. 
and the knot of D. If you have four inputs, how many combinations do you have? Isn't this 16? Let's throw 16 lines out. Ah, stay online. Even with the ruler, I can't even keep it straight. One, two, three, four, five. I need sixteen. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And then you have what? Four outputs? So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. And you're gonna connect them, you're gonna go zero is what? Zero, 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 zero. One is what? Zero, 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 one. Right? Two is zero, zero, what? One, zero. Three is what? Zero, zero, one, one. What's four? Zero, one. Zero, zero. Five, zero, one. Zero, one. Six, zero, one, one, zero. Seven zero one 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 eight. What's eight? One is that zero? Where is the zero? Is one zero? Zero 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 nine one zero zero one ten. One, zero, one, zero, eleven, one, zero, one, one, twelve, one in one, right? And where's the zero? Zero and zero. Thirteen, one, one, zero, one. 14, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 15 is 1, 1, 1, 1. <coughs> I don't know why we have to connect them. We just wrote the number up there. So that would be easy, but. And now I have three outputs, W, X, Y, and Z. Here is W. Here is X. W and Y. We have three outputs. <coughs> w, X, and Y. What's attached to W? Pen what? Three, seven, eight. 9, 11, and 15. 
What's attached to x? 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And what is attached to y? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And that's your design. You ship that to them, and that's what they make the ROM, they make the inside, just like what I make it look like this. But instead of writing that, that's where you're gonna ship them. A paper like this, and that tells them, okay, W is gonna be a value of one, it's a ROM here, because based on, I list all the combination, they know it's a ROM, and this is where the ones and zeros are. Again, the nice thing about the ROM, we have them in multiple sizes. They can come in way bigger size than what you need. If you need two of them, go ahead and use two. Let's say you have um, this one. This is 16 by four, but you need 16 by six. You can put two side by side. And your chip enabled, they'll go on at the same time. And you'll use all four here and use two columns from this one. And you have your six outputs. So this is I designed these function using a ROM. These three functions, W, X, Y, and Z. Now, if I decide to use PLA, which is Programmable Logic Array, I need to be careful, be creative with it somehow. Figure a way. So I'll stop the video here. I'll make the next video PLA with the same functions here.